this video is a response to a, a request I had from one of the lads at work. He was kind of taking the piss after I made the tour in the hole and he says why don't you do something like mince and dumplings. Well I am going to do mince and dumplings but they're going to be leek dumplings. Leek dumpling is a very very or it was a very popular dish at one time in the part of the world I come from which is Newcastle upon Tyne, England where the Geordies live. Ingredients are very simple. I mean, I'm not a cook, I'm a motor mechanic. It pisses about. You should probably get a tell by the way I'm cutting this onion up. Anyway, we're slicing onion up. And we'll cut it here that way. So it becomes a diced onion. Right, diced onion goes into a pan. Right, in the onion we need to put some mince. You need good quality mince. This is actually mince steak. If you put poor quality mince in, you're going to get a poor result. So a decent mince, that goes in. It makes up. Into there, a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, pepper, I like black pepper, I suppose it's right. We'll cook this off on a gas ring, we'll put a little bit of water in just to help it on. A little bit of cold water. Let that warm up and slowly simmer away. Right, well that's happening. I'll show you how to make the all important leek dumplings. A little bit more water in there. This is real good quality mince, so you don't get a great lot of fat out of it. Right, we'll let that slowly cook off. Right, the ingredients for your dumplings. Beef sh shredded beef suet, proper stuff, none of your vegetarian tackle here, self raising flour. So what self raising flour? By weight, you use twice as much flour as you do suet, and obviously well leak. Okay, so we'll have it measure out. Scales zeroed. <clears throat> if I go four ounces, four ounces of flour. Okay, four ounces of flour into a mixing bowl. Two ounces of suet, bollocks, two ounces, that goes into there as well, get the touch more because it's just so it gives it the taste. Right, to this we'll add a little bit of salt, not a great lot. And then cold water. 
We don't need the drill for this, we can just mix it by hand with a fork. You can buy a ready-made dump and mix, but it's not, not the same somehow. Starting to form together. You want it quite moist. Strange enough, the moister you have, you the more moist your mix is, the lighter your dumplings will be. At least that's what I've been told. Right, so that, as you can see, is nice and moist. And as we see up here, it's gone quite claggy. I think we could be a little bit on the moist side there. I may put a little touch of flour in just to dry it out a little bit. Right, I put a little bit more flour in just to make it a little bit less sticky or claggy. Next thing is the leek. You use all the leek, you need the green bit and the, and the white bit. We are do it. Slice it like that. And then you want plenty of in it because they're all Leak dumplings, you want to be able to taste the leaks. Right, we'll put that into a strainer. A bit more. It smells absolutely wonderful, this. Right, that goes into there. Simply wash this under a cool tap. Right, the leaf's been washed into there. I'm not wearing gloves to keep my hands clean, I'm wearing gloves to keep the food clean. As I've been Playing about in the garage all day, and my hands are on the dirty side. I need a little bit more flour just to take some of the moisture out. It's been added with the, the freshly washed leeks. Right, that's quite well mixed up now. We'll let this rest and turn our attention to the mince. Splendid. I've put a lot of leak in here, you don't have to put that much in. You don't have to put any leaks in at all. Of course then it wouldn't be a leak dumpling, would it? Right, the mince has been simmering away for about 20 minutes, it's fully cooked now. There's quite a bit of liquid in there, that's water I put in. What we need to do now is thicken that up and make a nice gravy. You could use plain flour to thicken it. What I like to use is gravy granules. They thicken the, the mince up and it also gives it a nice taste. Should about do it. 
so it's it's starting to look like mince now. Okay, that's just about ready. Turn the heat down. You could put your dumplings straight in here and put a top on them and steam them but I prefer to put mine in the oven cook them in the oven and the tops of the dumplings go nice and crunchy which is the way I prefer in these parts Right, I've got an oven proof dish here put the mince into that Lovely so all that is in there is mince and half an onion. You can put carrots in as well, turnip, but I haven't got any carrots or turnip. Right. Now for your dumplings, that's probably enough here to get six decent sized dumplings. You want a, a bit smaller than a tennis ball, about the size of a billiard ball. The last one at six. Right. And you can see why I had the gloves on. Right, I've got the oven preheated 280 degrees, 180. They go in there probably for 15 to 20 minutes until I cook right through and the tops are a nice golden brown colour. Right, they have been cooking for 10 minutes, we'll have a little look. The Dublin Zai, that's always a good sign. Back in. Right, these are about salted now. See how they've increased in size. But they're a bit like icebergs. Most of them is actually under the mince. The tops have gone crunchy. In about five minutes, and they'll be perfect. Right, I think now these are suitably cooked. They certainly are. This is not diet food. This is the sort of food you eat when you're working in a cool environment all day. Proper food for when you're hungry. I think it's only fair that we should try a little bit from your supper. Just one dumpling and a little bit of mince. You'd normally have this with mashed potato or chips or some of that sort of vegetable. I'm not really that hungry what that'll do quite nicely for my supper that's absolutely wonderful food of the gods